Hello and welcome to Magrathea Builder of Worlds. I'm not going to be talking about wargaming scenery this time around. I'm going to look at something else that I've quite enjoyed doing in the last year or so. Um, and that's the making of book nooks. I don't know if you've ever seen a book nook. It's quite a cool name. Um, but they uh, every now and then they crop up on uh, picture kind of things on Facebook. First one I saw was a, uh, a really cool thing that a, a Japanese artist had made of some back streets of Tokyo that was on a bookshelf. And I took a look at that and I thought, oh, that's pretty cool, I reckon I could do that. And then uh, a few days later, a good friend of mine posted uh, a thing on my Facebook page going, what do you think of this? I reckon you could do one of these. And so I offered to make him one. I made him this one. This is a medieval street. I had quite a lot of fun doing this. It was just totally off the top of my head. Um, different to the book nooks that I'd seen previously because I wanted it to look like a book. I wanted it to look like it was the inside of a book sits on a bookshelf. Um, and since then, I've made a couple more as, again, commissions for friends of mine. The first one is this one. A Star Wars commission done for a friend who wanted a present actually for somebody else who was a huge Star Wars fan. And we talked about what kind of things it would, would work from a Star Wars point of view, fit into a short, thin, narrow space. And the first thing that kind of came to mind was the trash compactor from Star Wars. That's the proper one, you know. You lot might call it Episode 4 or A Good Hope, but old fogies like me, Star Wars. Uh, I then made this one. This is more recent and again made for a friend of mine, one of my uh, members of my reenactment group, who's a big Lord of the Rings fan. And we talked about doing a Lord of the Rings book nook. And uh, we chewed over several ideas. In fact, I've used several of the other ideas for other ones I've got uh, underway. But this guy is a bit of a hobbit. If you ever met him, you'd know that he's totally a hobbit. And we went for something that was a scene early on in the story, which is pretty neat too. All four hobbits arriving outside the Prancing Pony in Bree, which gave me a lot of room to play around. I had a lot of fun making this one as well. I'm now working on a, another book nook, a commission for a guy I know who runs a, uh, his own shop for uh, LARP and reenactment. And he wanted a book nook that he can take out in his shop and actually have in his shop. So there are a few special things we've got to have in it. First of all, uh, it's got to be battery powered lighting rather than mains powered. And also it's got to reflect the store. We want a wandering store in the wandering store. So this is what I've been getting up to. Now, obviously, the making of the book, look, the inside bit, the actual contents of the book is the bit that I really enjoy doing. It's the artistic bit, the bit where I get to play around, mess about with ideas. And um, for the first three, I made all the insides first and then worried about the outside later. And that actually is a bit of a drag. The outer casings of the book nooks are made from MDF, which I had to make up individually for each book nook because each book nook, the actual shapes were um, unique. They just kind of like happened. Um, to speed up the whole process, I've got a friend of mine who has access to a laser cutter to actually make me some MDF books, which are pretty cool. So now I've got a whole series of book nooks that come with two sides, two bases and a front, which means that Although they're going to be the same size, uh, I can make the model much quicker. And this bit I know right from the get-go is going to fit. So these few bits here go together to make one of these. Which means my book right from the get-go is going to be a particular size. Okay, so we're actually going to start making the contents of this book. Look, you can see that I've got the box made, produced, and now I'm going to use one of my favourite materials to work with. Most of the scenery I've made over the years for Wargaming has been made with this stuff, um, and most of my scenery still has some of this in it somewhere or another. This um, is called Foam Core, or sometimes referred to as Foam Board. Let's have a closer look at the material. Well, in the videos that I make, I'm going to discuss the materials that I use whenever I can. Uh, and I most often, I'm probably going to be using this stuff. This is called foam core or foam board, for those of you who don't know what it is. It is a polystyrene material with cardboard layers on both sides. Um, some foam modelers like to 
peel off the cardboard to get to the foam to carve into it. I like to use it as it is because that cardboard on both sides gives it the, the structural integrity that buildings need, flat buildings. You can cut it easily with a decent sharp knife. There we go. Um, you can see in there quite nicely. It's, it's an excellent material to work with. I've been using it for 30 odd years, ever since I started building buildings for Warhammer Fantasy Battle. And I've used it for all sorts of things. It's not great for making rounded shapes with. You can cut curves into it and the like. But on the whole, if you're going to make very curvy buildings, you want to be looking at other ways of doing that, either polystyrene or thinner card or even printing them these days on 3D printers, that kind of thing. But for scratch building, regular buildings, it's excellent. <laughs> Okay, so here's the internals of the book nook now. Um, we've made quite some progress. Uh, the main structure then is made of foam board and balsa wood cladding on it um, because that's going to give a really nice texture. Jim wants his shop, uh, and his shop is pretty tricky to do from a, a book nook point of view because it's usually uh, under canvas. Or stuck in the corner of a kind of community centre or a sports hall or wherever the reenactment or lark market is. So I've gone with a bit of artistic licence here and decided it needs to be inside a wooden structure. But you can see quite clearly now we've got the two bits that are going to fit together to go inside the book nook. Um, this is the main part of the structure over here. You can see there's a round indent cut in there which has still got planking. Uh, so if you take out what's going to go in that it will still look like part of the wooden floor. And it's also got a window here at the back, which has got lead lining in it, which is made out of plastic fly swat. You can find an album about that on my Facebook page. Um, over on this side, this is the main part of the stall. Um, we've got uh, benches here and a shelf against the wall where we're gonna have these various wares placed up. There is a boar's head on a shield and a hook to hang a bag on. Uh, and another shield hanging on the wall, other items that you might sell. And to go together, then this will fit into the book nook like this, with Jim himself stood at the front, showing off with all his wares, and it'll be lit from above. I'm really quite pleased with this so far. Now I'm going to have to get on with the bit that's going to take absolutely ages, which is the painting of the whole thing. Okay, what's cool about this particular book look I'm making is the guy I'm making for, Jim, owns a shop that he takes to LARP events and reenactment events and reenactment markets and that kind of thing. It's called the, the, the Wandering Shop and he sells all sorts of, oh, he sells all kinds of odd stuff, reenactment supplies, LARP supplies and loads of different things. So I've been able to route around and find all sorts of different things that's going to appear in my version of his shop. Um, he's always got uh, knives to use, real knives and LARPing knives, but mostly real knives, practical things. Um, he uh, sometimes has weapons on his stall and he's renowned for going out on the battlefield with a great big giant wooden spoon, hence one there. Um, 
different boxes and chests and things for people to enhance their encampments with. Um, down here, what do we got? Pouches, belt pouches, water bottles, that kind of thing. Also very popular. This, I'm pleased with this. This is his new little wooden till that he posted on his Facebook page recently. So he's got his accounts book there and an ink pot. Might even find some coins to go in that too. Bench with other pouches and bed rolls and bits and pieces. Crates and barrels. And then there's going to be a whole bunch of other things as well. Weapons and shields hanging on the wall. It's quite a nice little project. I'm really quite enjoying this one. So this is some of the content that's going into the wandering shop. Um, this is I'm halfway through the painting process. All sorts of things I found in my bits boxes. There's bits of Playmobil, bits of Schleich stuff, things I've made from scratch. All sorts of little bits and pieces. The wandering shop is a fascinating place if you ever get to see it. A reenactment market or a LARP fair or that kind of thing. Um, he sells knives, pouches, weapons, granados. Chests for storing things in, bottles, trinkets, shrunken heads, stuffed bats, skulls, teeth, you name it. And I'm trying to represent all of that on this stand. So this is how we are uh, progressing. And this stuff is going to all end up in the model. And I really hope he likes it. Doing a bit of a dry fit of all the, the details inside the stall. Just to see how they're all going to go together. One of the problems I've definitely got from a colour point of view is the fact that the walls are wood, the floor is wood, this wall over here is wood, and uh, lots of the things are wood. Hence some of the colour that's going on, like the blue chest and the, the boards that the knives and the pouches and the bottles and things are standing on. Just to add that extra bit of colour and contrast, that skull's going to work quite nicely at the front, that's white. But you can see the barrel under there is brown, and wood coloured and the chests at the back are going to be brown and wood coloured and the till is too so i'm going to have to be careful with some of the paint colour choices that i make um the character stood in the front will stand out quite nicely mind you um he's going to end up with a off-white shirt and white trousers and that kind of thing um so that worked quite well but um yeah i've still got a bit to go so far Here we have then the two finished inside elements of the wandering shop. Uh, the main bit on the left, uh, roof one wall, nice window, weapon rack, bench with pouches and bed rolls, barrels and buckets, and a hideous old steering wheel, it's a bit piety, and then there's a, an Easter egg spider for people to spot. Then over, over here on this side, the main part of the stall with guns, knives, bottles, barrels, chests, the finished till with a quill pen, and uh, notes written in the notebook above, stuffed bat, jugs, stuffed lizard, grenades, all sorts of things you can find on this stall. So uh, these are going to go together. Now all I have to really do He's finished painting up the owner of the stall himself and assembled the whole thing. Lighting in these things is absolutely key as well. Um, the first one I did, the lighting was very much the last thing I thought about. Um, to start off with, I got loads of the, the design done and lots of the model made, but then it struck me that I hadn't thought about how it's going to be lit. And that one was lit with a battery powered set of led lights that are then put behind all the scenery the next two were done with um uh, mains powered lights so they've actually got a proper switch uh, and they're done um with the kind of sticky backed strip lights but uh for this uh book nook i had thought about using flickering lights jim Jim's shop is often outside in the in uh, a field at the Battle of Tewkesbury or a LARP event, and he doesn't always have access to power, so it's got to be a battery power thing. But actually, the the thing that I'm using for this, rather than flickering LEDs or battery pack LEDs like this, it's going to be one of these things. 
cork garlands. Um, when they're inside a, a bottle, they don't make a great deal of light. But actually, when they are um, lit up and they're going to be playing inside this, I think this is going to work really well. So this is going to be my light source. Um, 15 little lights that are going to be all in the, the top above the shop, all lighting down onto that. Easily switched on and off and easy for the owner to replace the batteries. So we're going to see how that works out. So at some point in the making of these book nooks, I have to think about what's going to go on the outside of it. Usually I make them look like books. So they get bound in leather or pleather and paint up to look like the books so they can sit on the bookshelf. But I think this one, which is going to be the shop, which is a wood on the inside and it doesn't have to look like a book in the same way, is going to get clad in wood and is going to look like part of the shelving so uh let's keep an eye on this and see how it works out so i'm near the end of this project now uh, i'm really pleased with how this book nook is coming on for honest jim and his wandering shop uh the last i'm just adding <laughs> I'm now just adding the last few details, sticking the last few bits in, and I've got to add a mirror panel, which is going to go in the back of the book nook to hold everything in place, hopefully increase the amount of light that shines out of it and enable people when they're looking in to be able to see all the details at the back as well. So I'm going to do that now. You can watch. So the last final details of these things are always kind of the most complicated bits. I've had a lot of fun making this model now, saving the very last bit to last, which is a little rat that's gonna go down the front. But um, I'm gonna put this mirror in now. So I think what I'm gonna do, I've had the mirror cut at a local uh, glass and locks and mirror place. So it's 24 centimeters tall by 11.7 centimeters wide uh, that fits in the gap really nicely. The guy in the shop didn't believe me I wanted a mirror that was only 11.7 centimeters wide, but. Um, it's cut really nicely. I could maybe have gone for one more mill and that would have just sat really snug in there. But to hold it in place, I'm going to use some balsa square section that I'm going to cut and stick into the back here and leave it short enough um, so I can slide the mirror out if I want to. I want to be able to get access to the back of the model, but most of the time should hold it fairly secure and in place. Um, so we're going to go for about, oh, let's have a look. I'm estimating, I reckon I'm going to need about 15 centimetres um, of balsa. Two bits of that, one glued on each side. Hopefully that then will hold it all in place. So, 15 centimetres there. This is already cut square section of balsa wood. Got from my local railway model shop. A lot cheaper than buying it from a store like Hobbycraft. Don't ever buy balsa wood from Hobbycraft. It costs about three or four times the amount it would if you go to a decent model shop. So, uh, just one bit there. Second piece. Usually I'd use an all-purpose adhesive for this job, but actually right now, I think I'm going to use some Gorilla Super Glue because it'll do the job real quick. I prefer the brush variety. You're gonna brush that all the way up there. So on one side, of course, I'm gonna stick it to my thumb first of all, it's very important. Move that in, not flush to the edge, but enough to get the mirror and hold it tight. And do the other bit. guess was any good or not can I slide that in and oh, look actually yeah no I can't I'm gonna to have to reduce the size of that
while I wait for the paint to dry off, just on this finishing detail, I thought I'd, I'd show you a quick modification I've made. This was the original set of lights that I put in here. Uh, there's kind of like a wine bottle set of LEDs, but I've actually changed over to uh, more lights with a bigger battery pack um, that will hopefully keep going longer, uh, make it more accessible and easy for the owner to be able to light up his little shop. That will sit up neatly up there, and the mirror, when that's in place, will hold that all sitting there quite neatly. It's nice and easy for him to get to. And there are now 22 LED lights coming through the ceiling there. Um, I'm going to take this last bit and take them all in place so they don't move around. But as I said, I'm really pleased with this. I've now cut down these uh, back bracing bits of balsa wood. They're now less than 12 centimetres long rather than the 15 I started off with, with a bit of a angle to help the mirror go in but then that can now easily lift in and out and we'll put that in there in a moment right then last couple of details and this model this book nook is going to be officially finished what do we need first of all first of all we need to find the rat awesome there is here's a teeny tiny rat inside by the bucket down here uh, there's a rat hole so i'm going to just gonna super glue this and stick this in place i'm going to put up the sign super glue on the base my fingers are too fat to get in here so i'm going in here with a pair of needle nose pliers sticking the rat in the hole placing it in position and the other thing I've done for this <coughs> is I've decided that Jim's shop needs a name. Now his shop is called the Wind Wander Inn Shop, which I'm pretty sure is a Terry Pratchett reference. So I have made the sign for the Wander Inn Shop. This is doing two things, three things really. First of all, a lot of the time when Jim goes out and does this, his shop is in a tent. So I liked the idea of having a piece of canvas up here the shop name on it that kind of like makes it a bit more tenty not really because the whole thing's wood but um secondly we then get the name of the shop lastly by hanging this name up here it helps to disguise the leds when you're looking straight in you can't necessarily see the leds that are coming down from the roof and what i'm using here are flat headed dressmakers pins to hold this in place there's no glue because they're stuck to the individual two separate pieces of the model inside and if we ever want to take it apart i'd have to unglue it so it's easier just to leave the pins in there so one pin through holes in each place and I'll push that into place using a bamboo skewer to push that right in there one two three four and i reckon i'm going to call that finished so this is the wandering shop there we are you can see inside there all the goods that jim might be selling knives Weapons, drinks, bottles, boxes, chests, swords, weapons galore. It's even got his great big giant wooden spoon. And of course it features Jim himself um, standing there in all his glory. On the outside, special offer of course. Uh, the Wandering Shops, very special offer. Buy one, get one. Always good, every day. So I really, really hope he likes this. The next book nook I'm doing is for another friend of mine. Who wants a sharp referenced book nook? So that's going to involve a whole bunch of Napoleonic figures. But in the meantime, I'm calling this one finished. <laughs>